So the Arco Coffee Grinder by Goat Story. We've been selling Goat Story products for a while and I've always found that design quite cool. With the Arco, the design once again is beautiful. It's different but beautiful. Very minimalistic and streamlined. And the unboxing experience is really cool. The way it's boxed and when you open it, the way it makes you feel really is quite nice compared to other grinders on the market. But when I look at this grinder, I'm not sure if I should be comparing it to a hand grinder. With the dial on the outside, the grinders that come to mind are the Etzinger or the Easy Presso or Benchtop Grinder, being a conical single dose grinder, something like the Niche Zero. And it does kind of sit in between the two realms. And that's also what makes it cool. The fact that you can have a grinder on the go and a grinder at home that does espresso and filter in such a small footprint. Obviously, the elephant in the room is its sound. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a shot out of a domestic machine like the Ranchilia Silvia, see how it does in the espresso front using the electric motor. Then we're gonna dive in and talk about the specs of the grinder and finally compare the sound to other grinders, the Fella ODE, which is also known as a loud grinder, and the Niche Zero, which has quite a beautiful sound for a grinder, at least in my perspective. So let's dive into it and do an espresso to start off. So the Arco does espresso all the way to filter. And being a hand grinder, I do feel it's gonna be more popular on the filter side of things. But we're gonna use the grinder on the electric base to pull an espresso shot to see what it would be like to live with espresso machine and the Arco. So first things first, we're just gonna pull the handle out and lock it in, bring in the white, with the line. Now you bring them together. When the machine turns on, it naturally wants to tighten it up more. So I thought if you just tighten it up firm, it's not gonna move through grinding. One thing to note though, it is a slightly different grind adjustment using the grinder by hand versus using the electric motor as it's running at 360 RPM. So I've got 20 grams of coffee. And I'm just gonna load it in. You can load up to 50 grams locking it closed and turning it on. As you hear the sound change, you know that all the grounds have been ground through. To remove it, you can remove just the base or the whole grinder. One thing to note though is you can only make three coffees back to back. So we're just gonna load it into the porter filter. Give that porter filter a nice wipe. One thing to note, it is quite cool if you do have a 58 mil porter filter that the container loads straight in. Just moving that around so it all loads in. One thing I am gonna do is use a WDT tool just for a bit of grind preparation because there is a small amount of clumps even though it's fairly evenly distributed. Just moving that around and giving it a tamp. Locking it in. And running the machine. Looking really good, especially for effectively a hand grinder. So I decided to run it from a Sylvia, even though it's a vibrating pump, dual purpose boiler, because I feel like at this price point in this kind of machine, demographic may be more Sylvia or Gadji Classy or something along those lines versus Lama Zucco Lever X or Prima. So I was trying to keep the machines on par with each other. Looking at that, the crema looks really beautiful, really solid, really nice. And tastes really good too. So, depending on which machine you are, you're gonna get different variances, but what I wanted to do was kind of to see what an espresso would like. 
One thing you can't see on camera right now is there is a fair bit of retention on the bottom of the grinder. So if I was gonna turn this grinder out and bring it out without making too much of a mess. So taking the grinder out, you can see there's a fair bit of coffee in here. If you are making coffee one after the other, the change would be quite low. But if you were to tap that out, there is a bit of retention. So putting in 20 grams doesn't necessarily mean, especially if the grinder is clean, that you're gonna get 20 grams out. So that's one thing just to bear in mind. But for a hand grinder, multi-purpose grinder, what they've achieved, this still is a very cool grinder. Talking about specs, what is it? So it's got a 47 mil conical blade inside, 100 mil steel shaft with twin bearings. When it comes to dialing it in, you dial it in from the outside, which is really practical. As you got 180 notches, what effectively is at zero, and when you're on zero, you're on zero. As you do one revolution, you're now covering the one at 60, the two at 120, and the three at 180. Each notch is clearly stepped, so you do know where you are, and it's very quick to read that numbering. On the bottom here, you do have a menu, so to speak, so you know roughly what adjustment for different style of coffee. And it really is simple. When it comes to the handle, if you're using it as a hand grinder, it's got a really nice bend, so you're not gonna have your knuckles hit. In saying that, the way you hold the grinder sort of is over the adjustment, which is a 50-50. For me, it hasn't actually changed position, but I can see with the movement, a dial moving. If you were to hold it up nice and high, it does feel a little bit awkward, but I feel that's the same with a few of the other grinders that have the dial on the outside. In saying that, way much more practical to have the dial on the outside than inside on the bottom or the top. I feel the real beauty of this really is the dual purpose of being able to have a hand grinder and a bench top grinder, which is a single dose grinder. So portable and at home, espresso to filter. You are getting a lot of bang for your buck out of one grinder with a small footprint, especially in apartment living. The elephant in the room is the sound. So we're just gonna run some coffee on both the Arco and the Fellow ODE, which is also known as a loud grinder, and in the niche, which has a really beautiful sound, in my opinion, anyway. So let's get started. We're gonna load 20 grams, and we're grinding it as an espresso grind on all three grinders, bearing in mind that on the Fellow ODE, we don't have the SSP blades in there, so it's a little bit questionable whether you can pull an espresso out of it or not. We do have it on the finest setting. As you can hear, it got louder towards the end, which you know you've ground through all the coffee. You also notice that it's got a small movement in it. As the motor's turning, it does lock itself a bit tighter, but it shouldn't make any difference on the coffee. It's just going all the way out to the end of that lock mechanism. And you've got 20 grams there. Now looking at the fellow, the same situation where you can load in 20 grams of coffee, turn it on, A lot faster, but also quite loud. Different sounding, but still very similar in loudness. And now we've got the niche. With the niche, loading in 20 grams of coffee. And in this case, In this case, a slower grind than the ODE, more similar in pace to the Arca, but the sound's a lot nicer to live with, a lot lower. Actually, to me, it has a really nice sound for a grinder. So, that's the elephant in the room. They are known as quite noisy, but I don't feel the noises out of this world, especially for the benefits that you get as a single dose grinder and a portable hand grinder. In saying that, it does sit in no man's land between a hand and a bench top grinder, being that it can do both. I do feel in an apartment living with tight space, it is a cool option to be able to not only do both, but take very small amount of bench space. And I'm kind of seeing these machines more for those that not only want to do filter, but espresso, 
home and on the go, and have it next to also a physically small machine, like a Silvio or Gaggia Classic, something along those lines. I know Goat Story reached out to a lot of people to give machines for reviews. This, like most things on this channel, is actually my machine. I bought it on Kickstarter, so it's purely just me liking to talk about coffee gear. On that note, if you have any questions on the Arco or any of the grinders here, let me know in the comments below, or if you just want to tell me what's your favorite grinder. And like always, if this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Thank you, and see you on the next video.